Great. How are you feeling now? Do you need to do anything? Stretch? Or? No, I'm good. I got, actually, I need to hold on. Just now, a text came in by my ex, my co parent. Yeah. Where? No, that's too short of an answer. For okay. like asking um, three questions when he says no. I left my water. Hang on. Yeah. Human moment. Mm. All right, I, I'll shut that off for now. I've responded, but nice. There seems to be lack of clarity about who is picking up who. Okay. Yeah. All feels good. Um. Yeah. Did that? Do you feel like that was a, a nice and clear conversation that you got to articulate a few things of of value? Uh, yes. Yes, I think. I mean, I don't have a, I don't even have a mental list of what's important to me right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of it was in there, so yeah. I, I feel good enough. At least on an emotional level, it, it, yeah. I mean, that really resonated with me, that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I guess what strikes me always is how everything is just, it's so trite, I'll say it anyway, how everything mm -hmm. is connected, you know, all those like, it all it actually feels to me like all those conversations that I have are really one big conversation. I just have them with different people. And I assume that's true for, you know, I would assume that's true for you too. And it's funny how sometimes, sometimes the same concepts keep popping up. And then, you know, somebody even uses an example that somebody else used three days ago. And then I think, okay, either I'm crazy now or this, like, wow. Oh, you're yeah, well positioned in the channels of information. You know? <laughs> the flow is open. Right. Of course, I go to the place of, hold on, am I messing up? Did we talk about it three days ago? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But if, we're, if, we're, it's all, if it's all just flowing through us, I think we're all good. Yeah. I'm disappointed that I do lose track quite a bit. But there is this entire field of studying like cultural memes because memes were around before the internet. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just a picture with text this, this idea that uh, information is growing and it, it's born between us not amongst us like children's nursery rhymes or the games that you play at school you know who invented that how does every child on the planet of the earth have some version of the same game it's it's beautiful to um, humble ourselves in the face of this uh, common intellectual unproperty <laughs> yes 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 Oh, that's yeah. super fun. Mm. You're saying oh, no, just, just the comments, you know, that I mean, basically, that's what you're throwing in into the mix as well, right? It's like, yes, the comments, it all has to become calm and good and the awareness about lack, you know, just, yeah. Anyway, maybe I will not go down that route. <laughs> I, I do get, I, that's one of those baffling things to me, but I said it already, that how people think they can own anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My entire life is a rejection of that idea. Mm. I know actually there's something funny about being European and living in the in the US because the the sense of being of ownership is stronger here, right? And autonomy. Mm. And there's two, two ways in which that shows, and I just find it so interesting. And one is that graveyards, like graves in Europe, get you reused, right? So mm. if somebody is buried after twenty five years, at least that's, that's what it is in Germany, and graves get reused. Of yeah. course, because, because why not? And, yeah. and why would you want to, like, it's just the one thing that makes sense. <laughs> and yet in the U.S., that is not the case. And people look at me as if I said the most outrageous thing when I say no. Nothing is left anyway. Like, we can't keep burying people in a new spot. Nobody's, like, why? And the other thing is names. And that's another thing where I'm always a little bit of at odds with the culture here. And so... In, in Germany, and I know in some other European countries, it's basically you have name, like first names, given names. Yeah. That exist already. And, he, and in Germany, it's not allowed to invent a name, right? Just a random, like, whatever. Oh, no, okay. No, no, no. You have to prove that the name, as far as I remember, 
I might be wrong, but um, you have to prove that the name has already been in existence. Like somebody must have already had that name. So, and in the US, you can just walk around eventing a name. I actually heard somewhere where like, <laughs> like kindergarten exam, somebody was saying that the first kid's name and then the second kid's name, the first kid had actually invented. And like, and I was just sitting there thinking like, oh my God, those Americans, you know, US Americans, inventing a name just seems so funny to me because there's a song that I love and like basically saying everything you have, you have from somebody else, even your name. Yeah. The concept of inventing a name and being unique it's neither appealing. It's neither true to me nor is it appealing. I don't know why it would be appealing. I like the I like the tracing back of history and and all of that and having a name that so many people have had before. I like that. Yeah. Just. There's clearly value both in preservation and innovation. And yeah, I mean, I find it a bit odd that you would have a a law preventing the innovation of a name, um, because for businesses we do it. Uh, and that's an entity yeah. as well. But um, no, that's yeah. really fascinating. <laughs> You're right, there's innovation. I guess, yeah. And then, you know, then it's balance again. I guess, yeah. um, like, I, I think it is Iceland that has a, has a wide list of names that you're allowed to do. Hmm. Like, pick one of those, whatever it is, 2,000 names for boy, <laughs> one of those 2,000 names for girl. That is, okay, that I find restrictive. Germany is on the restrictive side too, that's true. Hmm. Yet, then there is the two two um, open sides that also sits a little funny with me. Yeah, <laughs> you have to have some kind of enabling constraint, otherwise choice becomes impossible. And okay. yeah, that does help. I'm from the generation with too much choice, and uh, it does per paralyze you a little. Mm. <laughs> how, how, I'm curious about that. How would you just like to say more about that? Well, uh, in terms of coming toward a career or a purpose in life, there was once upon a time I might have been able to choose between laborer, wife, um, <laughs> wife and mom, or uh, I don't know, there are a certain amount. What's going? What am I qualified for? There's about two things I'm qualified for, and my friend's working at one of those, so <laughs> I'm going to do that for my life. You know, I'm going to become a butcher because that's what my friend's doing. Or, and now it's, okay, well, I can invent an entire new career for myself, um, you know, and start a business, which is not really a business, but it's a commons. And, and it's just so far in the abstract that it becomes quite difficult to move forward or to, um, to learn from what's been done in the past, even to the point where I have to remind myself to value the systems which already exist, that they are imperfect and that they could use a little repair. But even that is more useful than having to reinvent everything from scratch. Like, let's begin a new society. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's one example. Yeah. Um, yes. If you feel like Going back and forward, we can talk about that more if you wanted to, but um, I think we should move on to your pitch. Would you like to make one? You have a book coming out. And is this really, I mean, do I sort of pick up, let me ask, so the people who would watch the pitch have not seen the interview, right? It's not that you go from the interview to the pitch, you go from the pitch to the interview, correct? Uh, there are concentric circles <laughs> and one can fit in the, in the other. So let's put the pitch as the very center circle and it can exist on its own. But uh, somebody who's very interested in your work or in this topic might watch the entire series. Mm. <sighs> So, okay, let me give, give me a few seconds to to see what spin I would give this because I, it really is true that it is like a poem and whatever is interesting to me in that moment, I just go with that. Yeah. Go stale for myself. That would be boring. Um, yeah, take your time. I'll go, I'll go. Okay, I think it's the skills that I'm most most interested in now. 
Mm. So how do we do this? Do I just talk or do you want to say something? How, how would you like to organize this? We'll do again the interview or the like introduction of who we are and then I give you the floor and um, well, do you feel it would be helpful that I ask any leading questions within this or you just want to go? That's me. That's my work. Done. Uh, ask me something. <laughs> yeah. Something, yes. So uh, you should bring me in on that. What's going on in your head and what what you'd like to talk about? The skills. Yes, the skills. They like, okay, you have a sense of you would like to find a different way of working together, but but how do I go about it? Mm. That's, that's that I find the most interesting thing. Well, okay, now I'm already starting to talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope it's <laughs> That's good preparation. Yeah, rehearsal. Okay, how can we? And focusing on organizations. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so this liminal space that we're recording for the use of, um, well, who knows, documentation. I'll pause this one. We can have a little bit of time online just tapping into the coming meditation. Um, in Dragon Dreaming, they use the Pinakari practice. So that's a practice of uh, blocking your distractions and your ego and allowing the greater project or the greater work to speak through you. So we can take a little time just feeling into that together. Uh, and then I'll hit record again and we'll record the pitch. <laughs> 